So I'm just doing some uh, investigations on the uh, spindle bearings. Um, cleaned off, cleaned off the journals, cleaned off the dried oil and crap. I can't feel any major scoring on there. Um, it's not. It's not a pristine surface, but it's not bloody bad. Um, this probably first half inch actually sticks forward of the bearing block, so it's from there down. And then the back one. So, uh, as you can see, you put a bit of blue on it, and I've just sat it in the uh, in the lower half of the bearings, and then turned it in the direction it would go. So that's what we've got as a print. Which to me would suggest that it's going bell mouthed. Um, I need to check the journal again because there was a query when I first checked it. It, it seemed to be tapered a touch. Um, now my understanding of it is is, is you would expect a print at least 80% of the of the width and that's about the extent of my knowledge <laughs> I keep reading stuff and uh, I get a lot of contradictory stuff but um, uh, pretty sure if I do the same thing again and then put the top caps on and clamp them down I'm not going to get any contact on the top caps um, maybe on the rear one Shoot, yeah for thought so we've uh, stuck the spindle back in clamp the top caps down give the spindle a spin two revs by hand in the uh, normal orientation so I'm just uh, dropping off the front top cap see if we've got any ink transfer because I don't think we'll have any on the top see that now, I'll bring you around I'll show you so there's not a lot of ink because it just goes smear so touching on the middle point So uh, somehow I've got to try and measure um, the lift that I can get with the bearing block clamped down. Now bearing in mind when we first looked at the uh, the lathe with the chuck on and the DTI sat from the bed to the top of the chuck and a piece of wood under the chuck levered down and I think we got 35 thou lift which I was a bit gutted about. However I'm also of the mind that uh, somebody had been in and I don't know I can't recall whether these bearing top caps were clamped down tightly uh, so it may be that the 35 thou was mostly just taking up the slack anyway uh, so I've got to come up with a rig to do that now right, so there we go well I'll make that nine so point uh, I don't know about that, 0.09 which is around about five thou which is a shitload better than uh, we were looking at earlier uh, I'm going to try and pick up on this register and see because in theory the further out it comes the more the uh, move the, the any tolerance in the bearing will be emphasized what I'm trying to get at is a better indication of it. Right, 
through it. So let's draw that again. Looking to me like 0.08, which is under five now. So we'll do a quick calculation in a minute. Just walked in the workshop, and uh, I guess that's the first time I've come in and actually seen the delayed headstock on position. It actually, it all looks quite small now, or not so massive as it did. Oh, there so we go. I'm just re uh, repeating the exercise for the. Uh, this is the rear end of the spindle, and I'm shoving it behind. So well, that's 0.04 of a mil, probably a little bit less. Uh, so that's a, a couple of thou at most, and. When I've done the sideways, uh, sort of 20 to 2, pushing it down through that angle and up, I've got a similar reading to what I've got vertically, um, which is at or around 3 thou. Um, when I've looked, these are the dimensions I took with a telescoping gauge. So that's the larger bearing, the front end. And I've got... For some reason I've got a 10 thou. I can't find that on it but it, it, it may just have been that I'd got the telescoping gauge on two holes, I don't know. Um, don't know. Um, but I did get around about 5 thou uh, over 3 inches on the height, so that, which is near as damn it. If I've only got 3, thou of, three to 4 thou of lift now that's probably not far off what uh, a measurement of five thousand of telescoping gauges would have been allowing for some errors. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna drop the caps off again, lift the shaft out, and just have a look how that's printed up now. It's been run around and wiggled a fair bit. I don't think there'll be any ink on the top half of the caps. So that's roughly what a test bar should look like for this but that's based on my understanding that the spindle is a and it was taper four and a half and it should be four and a half inches of taper the large ends inch and a half diameter small ends 1.266 so that's what i've been given and that's only i think it's two and a half inches long um, i just measured the thing memory is not what it used to be yeah, it's what's that? Two and a half inches long. It's uh, it is inch and a half at the large end, or a tad over, a few thou over, um, and that's one point four. So I don't even know if it's the right taper now. When I put it in, without ramming it, it's rocking, which would to me suggest that it's actually a different taper. So uh, I think the only way to do this is uh, make up a, a trial piece between centres and just keep turning that taper until I can get a nice smooth fit and take it from there. So I'm working on the basis that the taper sleeve which was loaned to me is actually the right taper. Um, I've got to start somewhere and that seems a logical choice. So I've set it up on a, a test mandrel, a Morse taper 3 test mandrel which I bought. I was going to make a sleeve, um, which I might still do, them being the blanks. Um, watch this, so, that, so we're set up on centre line, and we're just tracking down, watch the indicator. So that's come off what, a divisional two? Now annoyingly, <laughs> I just done that and it ran back ran down perfectly. I'll do it again. Right, so we zeroed up on the start and we're tracking down. It's a little bit hollow 
and there is definitely play in my top side. Um, so I'm happy to say that's a good starting point. And uh, well, we'll see how we go. Well, that feels fairly adjacent. There's no wobble on it. So I think we could be, could could be argued we're good to go. Just need to turn the uh, parallel section now. It's not wobbling around anyway, so yeah, I think we'll have that out and uh, we'll mark up how far in it goes. So we're up to there. Just take that measurement, see what it is. So we are currently going in just shy of three inches. I don't know whether you can see, but the little step on the end there, that's the minimum size for the taper. So I've still got, I can come off a little bit more to improve the uh, finish, which I might just do. Uh, I've probably got, what, 15 thou there. That's as good a finish as I can get. That's running a shear tool over it. Well, it's actually the, the the main tool I've been using, but pulling it back over the face, so you get like a shearing action. It's not fantastic on this. It's better at that end. Mutter, mutter, mutter. Right. So the next job is to bring that down to a nominal diameter, plus or minus one ten thousandth of an inch. Ha! Not a chance. This is a true up cut, because if you remember we roughed it out with that end in the chuck. So we're now between centres. Having turned the taper between centres, I've now got to true up the parallel. It's around about 10 power depth of cut and a pretty slow feed. A bit smoky. We'll have to do that again because we uh, lost the cutting tip here on the return. So, freshly ground, freshly honed, we can try again. We've just about got a full pass out like, before the tool started to break down on its tip. Uh, the last half an inch was perhaps a questionable finish. Now, I haven't got a uh, one to two inch uh, tenth mite. I've got a one in, naught to one, and I've got a two to three, but I'm not got a one to two. So that's reading what? Nine and a three quarters of a thou. That's pretty damn adjacent, that, isn't it? Well, I've stuck a bit of blue up the spout, rubbed it in, and I can feel it's had a bit of trauma over the years, so it's not the smoothest. It's certainly not a precision ground face anymore. All I'm doing is just trying to get an idea as to is the angle of the taper right. There's a bit there, a bit here. It's all the way around that edge. I don't think the angle's wrong. I think it's literally a case as there's some um, high points in the taper, but I can't feel them with my finger. So what I think I might do is make up a plug with the compound set up as it is and then uh, apply some diamond paste to the plug put it in and see if I can't polish out some of the high spots that I can't feel and um, we'll see how it goes so that's the main problem of the uh, ball on the cylinder 
You can see that it ain't exactly a precision ground face. So I, um, you can see the blue picking up, and my uh, tape is beginning to fit a bit better. So I'm going to get it to the stage where I'm happy, and then uh, put some lamping compound on, and just to see if I can take out some of those high spots. Sorry for the shaky hand. I think it's fairly safe to agree that's a significant improvement. I mean, once the lathe's up and running, I can get myself some sorted out with some kind of um, tool post grinder and uh, internal die grinder and bring it back to good. Uh, but the lathe ain't running, and I need a test bar in it to set up the alignment of the spindle to the bed. Thus, the last two days cocking about. So, that's the test bar. Needs a bit of bit of work just to tickle it up but uh, it goes in without a thump um, I'll probably hone it as Robin suggested so I've got to try and work out how to make a hone That's now the sharpie test so I've inked up the bar stuffed it in Give it a twiddle and uh, not wine off hands. Like I say, not perfect, but it will give me a good enough reading now. I might uh, put a bit more honing paste on and do a bit more on it, but uh, it's not bloody far off. Which is phrase for the week. So this is the first trial fit. Um, well, I'll let you watch the indicator. What's that? Uh, pull divisions. 0.04. Maybe a bit less. Yeah, that's about 0.04, which is just under 2 thou. But I've got no guarantee that the bars. 100% right round. So, um, Mr. Renzetti, thank you, Robin, has recommended that I make up a uh, hone and hone the bar. So, that might be my next bit of project. Well, I've got the test bar set up on a pair of uh, V blocks. Uh, they're not super precision V blocks, but I've done them end for end. Uh, I'll zoom you in so you can see the clock. So it's the clock zeroes at the highest point, or at least it did a few minutes ago. So if I, I've got, so I'll take that as, a, as the highest point. That's a tenth. That's a tenth. That's a tenth and a half. Oh no, I might, might even make two there. That's a tenth. Tenth and a half. And that is two tenths down. So roughly with two tenths down here, zero there, and we've got uh, plus a tenth. So we're, we're within plus or minus two tenths straight off the lathe. Um, I've just sat and watched a video by Robin Renzetti where he's tweaking a decal clone uh, single lip grinding tool. 
uh, machine tool um, and he shows how he makes up an aluminium lap and uses diamond honing paste just to smooth out and improve the finish so I'm gonna actually see if I can find a piece of aluminium and do something similar so I need to mic that up bore a hole in the aluminium about that wide uh, a width with a hole running through put a slit down it and a few score lines for the slurry to get into and then lap away bring you back when we're doing it just for the sake of completeness I've actually sat the test bar face directly onto the onto the uh, surface plate and it gives me a highest point in here which is four tenths higher just over the middle four inches so yeah I'm uh, I'm not I'm not unhappy with that it's given me the same reading at each end so it just wants a bit of tickling up now to give me the same reading all the way down so this is my uh, hone based on Robin Renzetti's uh, video um, basically I've bored, bored that out to a thou uh, I think it's a thou oversized but it's still got a little bit of heat in it uh, and then I've used the put a different cutting tool a bit like a parting tool um, and just scratched in 20 thou deep grooves six of them uh, apparently that's what's needed that's where the um, honing slurry sort of sits in there and gets wiped up and embedded into the faces uh, I don't know whether six is enough um, seem to think Robin Ranzetti's had, had got probably 12 so I might do another lot in just half the positions anyway A bit neater than doing it with a hacksaw by hand. I've just uh, I've been lapping it about 10-15 minutes and I've just re-applied. It's not actually lapping paste, it's well not, not the sort that everybody else uses. It's this stuff. Which is actually used on a, on a uh, leather hone for sharpening blades. I've ordered some diamond lap, but uh, needless to say, it hasn't arrived. It's quite therapeutic once you get past the gritted teeth phase. It takes a while just to bring it in. Um, I reckon there was four tenths variation over the, uh, the length. And whilst you're going down that, that you've got to 
sort of skip it over the bits so it doesn't do that. Yeah, I think it would definitely want something like a 20 grit, no, what a 20 micron as a starting point, as opposed to I think this is something like four, three or four, or might even be two. Don Bailey from Suburban Tools does a, a little video on external lapping. That's worth watching. Along with, uh, I'll put the link in for um, Robin Renzetti's uh, video, which is where the idea came from. Via him giving me a nudge on Instagram. And you can feel when it's every time I tighten it up it goes really tight and then you go backwards and forwards a few times and it eases it up and of course some of the wear is off the inside of this and some of it is on the, uh, the part giving it a squib of a WD. to shoot off because that sounds like the postman's call. Dog's going manic. Oh, I just took the that. hone off and I'm cleaning up the um, mess off here and then we'll run it over to the surface plate and see where we're at. It's certainly going to be better than it was. It feels a hell of a lot smoother. But I think the um, the honing paste is really not ideal. Uh, not least because I just think it's too fine for the initial stages. It'll do it, but we'll be at it. I don't know whether the um, aluminium hone will wear out before the uh, shaft's down to size. Who knows? Seems to be holding up all right. Nice crisp edges on the... Uh, grooves inside but yeah anybody that don't like getting their hands dirty <laughs> might want to do a different way There are a few scratches in there which is would suggest I'm either picking up dust and well picking up 
something which is uh, not the diamond paste. It could be coming off the cloth. So I'm just looking at the position of the headstock in relation to the spindle alignment to the lathe bed. And the tolerance uh, I've been given is it should be it should be looking at something in the region at this point. If that's at zero, this needs to be somewhere between 0 0.08 and 0 0.015 millimeters, 12 inches over. So if you take my dial which is metric dial it's showing um, two divisions plus zero at the moment and you can see there's a, a misalignment in there but it's running between plus two let's just call them two plus two and plus four if i then move the sled along Now I appreciate that's probably out of your view. Let's see if we can bring you back. And then I repeat the same exercise. You can't really see it from there. I've got minus five plus three. And that's basically the misalignment between the spindle taper on the test mandrel and the bore of the spindle giving you that uh, lob if you like it's not running concentrically um, so you take four readings uh, top bottom left right um, and I've got plus or minus four and plus or minus two and uh, now I've got to do my head scratching and just do the sums to work out the difference to see whether I'm within that tolerance the idea is that if uh, if I can get the headstock something like, I know I've got about three thou to come out of the bearings, scrape it out. So as I'm scraping that out, I can, when I keep testing it with the test bar, I can actually make sure that I'm, I'm bang in the middle of that tolerance band. What's the reason for the test mandrel? Uh, if I was making it again, uh, now that I've got actually got, know what the taper is, I'd uh, start the diameter for the test mandrel here. Uh, I've actually given myself far too much taper lengthways. Simple reason I wasn't sure how, how much I'd have to take off to get a fit. Um, but I've, I've got enough length on this. I can recut it once I've once the lathe's up and running. I can grind the spindle spindle bore taper and then using the same setup grind the taper on the uh, test mandrel so yeah um, now there's a bit of M float on the um, spindle because I've not set any of this lot up so you've got uh, I don't know, about 60 thou so I'm just pushing it away so that the end floats out of the equation so that's where if we start off at oh, let's, Call that 12 o'clock. That's 90 degrees round. That's uh, half past. That's the other 90 degree round, so quarter two. And then that's back round to 12 o'clock. And just by working those numbers, you can check the offset versus the offset here and that should give you the spindle alignment I need to mess about for a bit so I can get happy with it but uh, well, that's the way it works and just for the hell of it if I get hold of the casting of the headstock which is bolted down so the casting ain't moving and give it a tug I can't see any movement on that dial but if I get hold of the spindle at the bearing And that's only finger moving it so those, there's me half now so i think by the time that that bearing's reseated and the top's brought down and seated on it i think we'll be golden
Right, so we've got the jig on. Check the spindle alignment on the existing setup, and it's within sort of half a thou where it needs to be all the way along. <clears throat> and that's in terms of the position this way, the position that way. So the job now is to finish scrape the bed, um, make sure everything's as it should be. Spent a couple of hours yesterday re-leveling the bed up so we had the spirit level crossways and lengthways. It had shifted because I'd kicked the wedges over the time. Um, so we're back onto level. So I've now got to take that out, take the spindle off, uh, lift the headstock off. And as I say, then it's a case of refinishing the bed. So it feels like we're going backwards, but it's not. It's actually <laughs> it's the final step for scraping it up. Um, I'm going to check the print on the bottom of that, but uh, I'm not expecting anything uh, significant in terms of bedding it because the uh, bolt centers all lined up pre pretty much straight away um, so I'm not expecting any major issues. Righto.